In this video, you are going to learn how to start a blog for beginners. I'm gonna take you step by step through different lessons, through seven different steps to getting your blog started. And this is starting from complete zero. You don't even have a domain name yet. We're gonna walk you through the entire process of finding a domain name, getting your hosting set up, installing WordPress, getting started with WordPress, and creating your very first blog post. Now, if it's going too slow for you, just go down right here in the settings and speed up the video to your pace. A few other tips before we get started. In the links right below this video, there's gonna be some valuable content that you're going to need while you're setting up your blog. I've also put together some timestamps for you so you can jump ahead or skip back to different sections or different lessons if you need to, you know, move ahead. If you already have a domain, you can skip ahead. So go check out the uh, timestamps in the description as well as keep an eye on those links as you progress through the video. I highly recommend you follow along uh, to this video on a computer while you're setting up your blog. But if you wanna come back later and watch the videos, I've got a link to my free blogging course that you can follow on your own pace. There's different lessons and sections so you can easily hop around to wherever you need to. Once again, there's a link right below this video. All right, let's jump in to lesson number one. Namish is a great website to find available domain names and get ideas for domain names. When you click on the link in this lesson, it will take you to namemesh.com where you can search for keywords or phrases to find available domain names. Let's pretend that you were going to start a blog about art or more specifically pottery. You could type in keywords in this search bar like art and pottery and click generate to get ideas for available domain names. You'll see here a lot of available domain names will pop up on the screen. If you want, we could even change the registrar to Namecheap to see what domains are available through Namecheap. We're going to look for .com domain names as those are the best domain name extensions still today. If you're unsatisfied with the results, you can always add another keyword. If my name were Kate, maybe I would add my name as part of the domain. I'm seeing a lot of ideas here for domain names that include my keywords. Let's try one more search for an available domain name. Let's check the price of potterywithkate.com. Potterywithkate.com is available on Namecheap for only $8.88 per year. This domain name follows our three keys. It's simple, easy to spell, and easy to remember. Now you're ready to purchase the domain name using Namecheap. If you followed the instructions in the how to find a domain name video in the previous lesson, you can continue where you left off. If not, you can click the link in this lesson and go to namecheap.com. Here you'll type in your desired domain name. Now we'll add the domain name to our cart. You'll see some frequently bought together options. We do not need to purchase any of these add-ons to get started with our blog. So we will continue to view the cart. One of the reasons why Namecheap is such a popular place to buy a domain name is that you get the free WhoisGuard subscription. Many other domain name registers charge a yearly fee to hide your personal information. You can click the question mark to see more information about what is WhoisGuard. And like you can see here, it is free forever through Namecheap. You can select how many years you'd like to purchase your domain name, or you could select one year and turn on auto renew to ensure that you don't lose your domain name. When you're finished, click confirm order. Now you'll need to create a Namecheap account. When you're ready, click create and continue. Fill out your account contact information. When you're finished, click Continue. You'll need to select a contact for Whois contact information. ICANN requires the Whois database to store owner's contact information for all domains registered. However, you do have privacy protection, meaning that this information will be hidden 
from the public. Leave who is guard privacy protection turned on. Then press continue. Next, enter your payment information. You can use a credit card or a PayPal account to pay for your domain name. The bottom of the screen, you can select renewal settings for your purchase. When you're ready, click continue. Review your order and then check out. I'm checking out with PayPal. You can provide your feedback or close the pop-up. You have now completed the purchase of your domain name. You can click manage to manage your domain name. You can access your domain names again by coming to namecheap.com and logging in with your account. After logging into your account, you can go over to domain list to see your purchased domain names. SiteGround is my recommended hosting provider for all blogging websites. They have great customer service and great speed and performance. You can click the link in this lesson to go directly to SiteGround.com so you can start your blog. When you get to the home page, you'll scroll down and see some different hosting options. We are going to choose WordPress hosting. On the WordPress hosting screen, you'll notice some different plans. There's a startup plan, grow big plan, and go geek plan. You can start off with any of the three plans or upgrade at any time to a bigger plan. For most of you getting started with a blog, I recommend the startup plan. This is a great plan for beginners who are just building their website. And the great thing about it is there is a very low monthly price to get started. You get one website, 10 gigabytes of web space, and you can handle around 10,000 visits per month, which is more than enough for a beginning blogger. Like I mentioned, when you outgrow your current hosting plan, you can easily upgrade to the next plan on SiteGround within your account. Click Get Plan for the Startup Plan. Like I mentioned in previous lessons, you do have the ability to purchase a domain name directly through SiteGround. However, you'll notice that the price of domain names is a little bit more expensive when you buy directly through SiteGround which is why I recommend choosing a company like Namecheap. Since we already purchased our domain name through Namecheap, we are going to select, I already have a domain. And then we'll enter in the domain we purchased. Then click proceed. Now it's time to set up our SiteGround account. Enter in your new account information and client information. Next, enter in your payment information. Scroll down to select purchase information. Like mentioned, we've chosen the startup plan. You can also choose a data center for the web hosting server location. The closer the web server is to your actual location, the better performance you'll have with your blog. Select the closest data center to your current location. If you're unsure which data center to select, the default data center is probably your best option. Next, you'll select the billing period. You can choose a one month trial or select 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months. I recommend choosing 12 months or greater for getting started with your blog. You'll get the best price at that period. You also have the option to include SG Site Scanner. This is a monitoring service that checks your website daily and immediately notifies you if your website has been hacked or injected with malicious code. If you wish to include SiteGround Skype Scanner, select the box, but I don't recommend it for beginners. If needed, you can add it later. You'll notice the total at the bottom of the screen. Agree to the terms and choose if you'd like to receive SiteGround news and special offers. Then click Pay Now. When setup is complete, proceed to the customer area. Now you're ready to start your new website. Under set up your website, select start a new website. We are going to install the WordPress software. Here you'll have the opportunity to choose your WordPress login details. This is the username and password you'll use to log in to your WordPress dashboard. 
You'll learn more about this in an upcoming lesson. For now, choose an email, username, and password that you'll easily remember. Then click Confirm. Like I mentioned, here's just one more opportunity to add SiteGround Scanner. You'll also be able to add it later if you need to. When you're ready, click Confirm. Check the box that you have read and agree to the terms of service, and then click Complete Setup. Then click Proceed to Customer Area. You are now signed in to your SiteGround account. You can access your account information by clicking My Accounts. Here you'll see the domain name with the WordPress logo for the website that you've just set up. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to connect your domain name with your WordPress blog. You'll need to be logged in to your Namecheap account or wherever you purchased your domain name. You'll also need to log in to your SiteGround account. In your SiteGround account, click Information and Settings. On this screen, you'll see Account DNS Information. We are going to use this information to connect our domain name with our SiteGround blog. Open up your Namecheap account and find your domain name under the domain list. Click on Manage. On this screen, scroll down to Name Servers. Name Servers is where we'll put in the name of the SiteGround web hosting servers. Click the drop down arrow and select Custom DNS. Now you'll see two name server options. Go back to your SiteGround account and copy in the first name server information. You do not need to include the numbers in parentheses. Copy and paste name server one into the box on Namecheap. Then copy and paste name server two into name server two on Namecheap. When you're finished, click save. That's how easy it is to connect your domain name to your SiteGround blog. It may take a few minutes for your name server settings to update. For now, we'll go back to SiteGround. You're now ready to build your WordPress blog. In about five to 10 minutes, you should be able to access your WordPress admin dashboard. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to log in to your WordPress blog and how to get started designing your website. To access your WordPress blog, in the URL bar at the top of your web browser, type in your domain name forward slash WP admin. You should be taken to this screen. Here you'll enter in your username or email address and password that you selected when signing up with SiteGround. I'll put in my username and password. You can select Remember Me for easier login next time. If you need to, write down your username and password so you don't forget. Then click Login. Welcome to your WordPress site. You'll notice the SiteGround logo in the top of the screen. Here is where we'll get started setting up our WordPress blog. Scroll down and click Start Now. On this screen, you'll be able to select a theme for your blog. Browse the available themes until you find one that you like. You can even select from different categories of themes. Remember, you can always change your WordPress theme at any time in the future. I'm constantly looking and testing out different themes to see what I like best for my blog. So don't get too caught up on selecting a theme right here. Selecting any theme to help you get started will be just fine. You can also click the magnifying glass to see a preview of what the theme would look like with a website. You can exit out or select the theme if you like it. 
I'll select the painter theme. You might get recommended plugins that you'll need to build and design your theme. You'll notice this is a free plugin, so you can click confirm to continue. On this page, you'll have the option to select other useful plugins and features to include and download to your WordPress blog. Simply click select under any of the features or plugins to add them to your website. You can also add these plugins later at any time. For now, I'll simply include the contact form that was selected and click continue. Here are some more marketing plugins that you can add to your WordPress blog. Once again, you can add any of these plugins at any time in the future. These are just some recommended plugins to get started. I'll actually select this SEO Yoast plugin and then click complete. Your WordPress installation is in progress. Congrats, your site is ready. Click go to dashboard to access your WordPress dashboard. You have now successfully installed WordPress to your blog and you're ready to get started designing and building your website. In the next lesson, you'll learn the basic intro to WordPress and how to navigate through the dashboard and other features of WordPress. In this video, you'll learn how to navigate through some of the basic features of WordPress to learn how to get started designing your blog. Up here in the top left of the screen, you'll see my blog. You can hover over my blog and click visit site to visit your blog. This is what your blog or website looks like as of right now. We'll obviously need to edit all this information. This will take time, so be patient. It also will be different depending on which WordPress theme you choose. To go back to the dashboard, simply hover over my blog and click dashboard. Now we're back to where we started in our WordPress dashboard. Also at the top of the screen, you'll see a little notification for new comments on your blog, a plus new button where you can quickly add a new post, media, page, template, user, or forms. We have a Yoast SEO notification for our SEO plugin that we installed during setup and a purge SiteGround cache. Over on the right is your WordPress account information. Here you can edit your profile or log out of your WordPress dashboard. Over here on the left are some different options. At the top, you have an option to go to the home of your dashboard. Occasionally, you'll also see notifications for updates. These could be updates to plugins, themes, or WordPress. Post is where you add new blog posts. You can access all of your current blog posts, add a new blog post, view categories, or tags. Media is where you add photos, videos, and other files to your blogging website. Pages is where you view all of your current website pages or add a new page. Pages and posts are very similar but slightly different. Posts are where you'll create new blog posts. Pages are for other things like an about page, contact page, product pages, sales pages, home pages, and other types of pages on your blogging website. Comments is where you can read and review comments left on blog articles by your readers. WP Forms is a plugin that might get downloaded when you install WordPress. You can browse around how to add WordPress forms and collect data from your readers. Elementor is the plugin that was added when we set up this specific theme. You can browse the different options here to learn how to use the Elementor plugin. You can also have templates for your WordPress pop-ups and themes. Appearance is where you can change themes, customize your theme, add widgets to your website, change your menus, edit your header, or edit the code. 
Plugins is where you'll install and add new WordPress plugins. There are thousands of free, useful plugins available for WordPress bloggers. Over time, you'll find and discover new and interesting plugins that will help you along your blogging journey. Users is where you can add new users or editors for your WordPress blog. In Tools, you can import or export your WordPress blogging information, and you can also adhere to GDPR regulations by exporting or erasing personal data of users. You can find more information about GDPR on my website, learnhowblogging.com. Under settings, you can change some different basic settings for your blog. You can change settings for writing, for reading, discussion, media, permalinks, or privacy. You'll also see other plugins that you download here on this left-hand menu. Here you'll see our Yoast SEO plugin with the options for this plugin. As you install and download new plugins, new options will appear here in the left-hand menu. You might also notice that some plugins won't appear in the menu, but they might be located in the settings. Here on the dashboard, we have some basic options. We can view our site like we've done, manage pages, or change our theme. We can also manage some of the plugins that we've had downloaded. Down here are some useful links to some WordPress tutorials and knowledge bases where you can find hundreds of helpful articles to help you build your WordPress blog. Let's look at how to edit your WordPress blog homepage. We'll click on Pages, All Pages, to see what pages we currently have on our blog. You can see here by default we have a contact page, the front page or home page, a WP Forms preview, and another WP Forms preview. To delete unnecessary pages, simply hover over the page and click Trash. Let's edit our front page or home page. To edit the page, you can simply click on the title. Depending on the WordPress theme you've chosen, this process could be very different. Follow the tips on, on your theme to learn how to edit the theme. You can also find various tutorials online depending on which theme you've chosen. For this specific theme, we're using the Elementor plugin, which allows us to edit different types of information right here. I can also scroll up and click Edit with Elementor to edit my home page. Now I have different options to edit my home page. Over on the left are different types of widgets that I can add to my page. You'll notice when I hover over a lot of the text, I also have the option to make edits or change text. Take some time to edit your home page. When you're finished editing, you can click update at the bottom of the screen to update your changes. You can also save your changes as a template. When you're finished, click the three lines and then click Exit to Dashboard. Like I mentioned, updating your homepage will be different depending on the theme that you choose. Take some time to play around with your theme to learn how to edit your homepage. Apply these same principles to editing and creating other pages. You can edit your contact page, add an about page, or other pages to your blog. From the WordPress dashboard, we'll click on Posts and Add New. You're now ready to create your very first blog post. Your screen might appear different depending on the theme that you've chosen. Here at the top of the screen, you can add your title. In the writing block, you can start typing your blog article. You'll notice when you type in the block, there's some different text options. You can change the alignment, the type of text or heading, create lists, quotes, verses, or other settings. You can also change text to bold or italics or add links over specific text anchors. The three dots will show additional options for editing text. Over here on the right, we can change from the block settings to document settings 
to see some other information. The current visibility of this blog article is public, but it has not been published. Once we click Publish here at the top of the screen, our blog article will be published onto our website. The permalink structure is where you change the link to this blog article. You can also change permalink structure in your WordPress settings under Settings, Permalinks. Categories is where you can add categories for your blog posts. Under Tags, you can also add a tag to your blog post. You can set or upload a featured image to appear on your blog post. Excerpt is where you can write a short description of what the blog post is about. Discussion is where you can allow comments or pingbacks. And Post Attributes is where you can change the template of the blog post. Here under My Theme, I also have some other settings that I can change for this blog article. If I scroll down, I'll also see access to the Yoast SEO plugin. I have an article on my site, learnhowblogging.com, to help you learn how to use the Yoast SEO plugin. Back on the right, if we go back to block settings, we can select a block and view different options. We can change the font size, color settings of the background or text, or add additional CSS code. Once I'm finished with a block, I can click the plus sign to add a new block. I can then choose an image, or other type of information to add to this blog post. I can also move and rearrange the blocks as I like. Up here on the left is another way to add new blocks. When you're finished with your blog article, simply click Publish in order to publish your article to your website. You can publish immediately or schedule the blog post to be published at a specific date and time. Now that my post is published, I can select View Post to see what it looks like live on my blog. You'll of course be able to edit all this different type of information on your blog. To go back and access your blog post, simply click up in the top left to go to your dashboard. You can then go back to All Posts to see all of your blog posts. Right here, I can go back to my blog post that I just created. You can always make changes to any blog posts and click update to make them live on your blog. All right guys, that's how easy it is to start a blog. If you have any questions for me, leave me a comment right below this video if you had any trouble getting your blog set up. Once again, if you need to go back and watch this later on a computer, make sure you sign up for my free blogging course so you can access all these lessons and videos that you've just watched and you can go through them step by step or skip ahead, repeat whatever sections you need to go back and, and watch again or do over again. So there is a free link for you in that course. Guys, I've got all sorts of videos on this channel to help you learn how to use technology to build an online business and create a life of freedom. My name's Andy, you're watching Learn How. We'll see you in the next video.